picture, as you can see, was taken in a busy American city. This picture was taken at exactly the same time and at the same spot. Question, how was it done? A modern motion picture camera photographed the traffic in action, while the Daguerre camera, the great-great-granddaddy of all cameras, was used to photograph the buildings alone. The action of this camera is so slow that there isn't time for moving objects to register on the film. On the other hand, the buildings being stationary gradually formed a sharp, clear image. And why use the Daguerre camera? To show that any picture of America without automobiles is hopelessly out of date. Today, the automobile is part of any American scene. Every man, woman, and child in America could go riding at the same time. And if we wanted to, we could all ride in the front seat because there is a car or a truck for every three persons, almost 50 million motor vehicles. How many are 50 million cars? Bumper to bumper, they would stretch around the earth at the equator seven times. The distance we drive our cars and trucks every day would take us on five daily round trips to the sun. But the real importance of the motor car is in the way it has opened up new horizons in our way of living. And that brings up a very interesting fact about one out of every seven American workers. Let's see what it is about that one worker out of seven. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven. Sir, what do you do for a living? You've heard of tea testers, haven't you? Well, I'm a tooth tester. Yes, this man is a tooth tester. He listens to automobile horns in a factory to be sure they are tuned to the proper musical tone. If anybody should ever ask you what the proper musical tone is, it's E flat combined with G. Uh, let's try again. Uh, pardon us, sir, but would you tell us what business you're in? Why, certainly. I'm a farmer. And uh, what do you grow on your farm? Well, you might say I grow automobiles because I own part of the four million acres of farmland used to grow raw materials for paints and lacquers and insulation used in motor cars. And you, sir, it seems that you're a miner. What do you mine? I mine automobiles. You see, uh, it takes the miner to dig the iron and the coal and limestone for automotive steel. And then, of course, uh, some of us dig the uh, copper and lead and molybdenum and sulfur that go into automobiles. You might get answers like that in any crowd anywhere, from any one of over nine million men and women who make their living directly because of automobile transportation. That's what we mean by one out of seven. Let's see how many it takes to make over nine million people. We'll begin with the city of Los Angeles, which has become our fourth largest city. Suppose every family in Los Angeles should decide for some reason to move elsewhere. Then suppose into each house left vacant, there should move a family of a worker in the automobile industry the one man out of seven. Actually, Los Angeles isn't nearly big enough to hold them all, nor, for that matter, is the whole state of California. You see, there'd be the steel workers, the men who make steel for the automobile and their families. There'd be the families of glass workers who make automobile glass. We'd have to find homes for the families of all the workers who build tires and batteries and parts. And we'd have to make room for the 800,000 families of the men in the big motor car and truck assembly plants. Yes, it would be moving day for one out of every seven families in the United States. And we'd have to include the moving van driver and his family too. Because you see, he is one of more than five million drivers who drive for a living. Trucks, buses and taxis. And while you're about it, did you ever stop to think of how many people it takes to maintain our roads and highways? Well, quite a few, because on the highway miles of America, we could drive to the moon and back more than 14 times. <laughs>